Hello everyone. Welcome to the third lecture of the course. In the previous lecture, we had talked about where we stand today after undergoing UHV2 and what shifts do we expect from this course. So we had talked about one shift that might have taken place in you after having gone through the foundation course that is called as UHV2 and what shifts can be expected after going through this course. So we had talked about three shifts, one that is expected from you after having gone through HV2, another which you may go through after doing this course. And there was yet another shift that we talked about uh, at the end of the lecture. Now in this lecture, we are going to recapitulate what we have studied in the previous course. So we are discussing the first module of the course where we are getting introduction of the course. And in this lecture, we are going to recapitulate what we have studied in UHV2 and we'll talk about the basic human aspiration and its fulfillment. Our exploration and understanding from UHV2, if you look at it, the foundation course in universal human values that was UHV2 is a prerequisite for this course. Therefore, before we proceed, let us recall some of the basic concepts relating to certain basic realities that we have explored in UHV2 course and which are going to be used and further developed in this course. So this is what we are going to do in this lecture. We had talked about the basic human aspiration in the previous course and the program for its fulfillment. And this is something that I have been saying again and again, that the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity. And this is something that we had discussed at length in the previous course. We had also seen that the basic aspiration is fulfilled by living in human consciousness. And that essentially means by ensuring right understanding, right feeling and physical facility. So if you remember, we had talked about three needs of a human being. One is the physical facility. The second is relationship. And there, what is important is the feelings in the relationship. And the third is right understanding. And we had also looked at the priority of the three in our life. And we had seen that right understanding comes at the first priority. Relationship comes at the second priority. And the physical facility comes at the third priority. When I'm able to ensure right feeling in me, in my relationships based on right understanding, I am able to ensure mutual happiness. Similarly, with right understanding, I'm able to make out the need for physical facilities correctly. And I'm also able to recognize my relationship with the rest of nature. And then I'm able to produce the physical facilities in such a way that it enriches the nature as well as helps me be prosperous. So we had seen that living with human consciousness, that is ensuring all the three right understanding relationship and physical facility, I'm able to ensure mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. This transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is ensured through human education sanskar. So you'll see that something that we had discussed in the previous course. If someone is only working for physical facility, being ignorant of the relationship and the right understanding, then one is living with animal consciousness. But if one is working for all the three, that is right understanding, relationship and physical facility, then one is living with human consciousness. And this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is essentially the development of a human being. Now this is something that you can uh, look for yourself also. So if I am working only for physical facility, which can suffice only for an animal, then I'm living with animal consciousness. But if I'm working for all the three, isn't it? Then I'm living with human consciousness. And this transformation is possible only through human education sanskar. And this transformation is the development of myself as a human being. Living with human consciousness provides the base for ensuring justice and order leading to undivided society and universal human order. So my competence to live with mutual happiness in my relationships helps me participate in an undivided society, a society free of any kind of division, where there is a feeling of relationship between every human being. And similarly, when we are able to understand our mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature also, then we are able to ensure universal human order. That is a human order which can be there across the planet, across the society, where we are able to enrich the rest of nature as well as ensure justice with every human being. 
and this is the coveted state let me say that listening to these words like undivided society and universal human order may seem to you very difficult to obtain but if you look at your natural acceptance this is what you are looking for isn't it so at least the goal has to be clear whatever we attain in terms of the right goal is an achievement for us if the goal setting is wrong then whatever we do we are not able to work in the right direction so our direction has to be right our goal has to be right and if we ask ourselves whether we want to have a divided society or undivided society the simple response that we get is undivided society do we want order or disorder across the planet so we say that this is order which i naturally accept it simply means that our coveted state our desired state is this undivided society and universal human order and we need to work for it now how to go about it we are going to discuss it at length in this course so if you look at the role of education sanskar it is to enable this transformation human consciousness means ensuring all the three right understanding in the self relationship with human beings and physical facility with the rest of nature if someone is working only for physical facilities which can be largely adequate only for animals then one is living with animal consciousness but if one is able to ensure all the three then we can say that yes he or she is living with human consciousness and why he or she why not me so let us find out for ourselves there is something for you to explore to verify and i'm sure you must have verified this in the previous course also do we need all these three or we can drop anything out of this can we drop this right understanding can we drop the relationships or can we drop the physical facility so we'll see that we need all the three and if you look at the priority this comes as the priority right understanding being at the first priority relationship being at the second priority and physical facility being at the third priority when i am able to ensure my relationship based on right understanding then only i am able to ensure mutual happiness and when i am able to ensure my participation with the rest of nature uh, with right understanding then only i am able to ensure mutual prosperity and this is the real meaning of transformation this is the real meaning of progress for uh, mankind and then only we can say that we are progressing we are developing in true sense of the word presently it so happens that we have given emphasis largely upon physical facilities and we are trying to multiply the physical facilities get more and more sophisticated physical facilities but we'll see that at the core if the right understanding is missing the right feeling is missing the right utilization of physical facilities is also missing let me ask the same question which we had asked you in the previous course that if you look at your family what is the major source of problems in the family is it the lack of physical facilities or is it the lack of relationship and when you look at it closely you we'll see that largely i'll not say that this is going to happen in every family but at least you can explore for yourself what is the major reason and we'll see that the major reason is lack of relationship and not physical facility even if somebody feels that it is the lack of physical facility which is the major cause of problems in the family then let me give an example let's say there is a family in which four people are there and everybody needs five chapatis in a day chapati would mean something that we would like to eat to fulfill the need of the body then the family requires 20 chapatis in a day let's say some day only 18 chapatis are there and two chapatis are lacking now what will result will there be a fight in the family for food will the family members fight each other for food or not uh, now that all depends on the feeling of relationship if we have the feeling of relationship we feed the other first and they need and then we work the next day so that next day we do not have this dearth of physical facility but if we do not have the feeling of relationship then we fight for physical facility and we struggle with each other and we accumulate more than what we require and if you look at the families the society this is what is being seen the data suggests that the food production on this planet is six times the requirement this is something that we got from uno in one of its reports but people are still dying of hunger and why are people dying of hunger because there is improper distribution system now why there is improper distribution system 
this distribution system is something to do with the feeling of relationship. If I'm not able to distribute to other people in the society, it means there's a lack of feeling of relationship. And this lack of feeling of relationship can be sorted out only with right understanding. So the more you explore, you'll see that this is what we require as a human being. We require all the three. And the right understanding comes at the first priority. Unless I have the right understanding in me, I'm not able to identify the feelings which are naturally acceptable to me. I'm not able to identify the need for physical facilities for me. And thus, even if I keep on accumulating, even, even if I keep on working for more and more physical facilities, I do not have the feeling of prosperity. And lacking in relationship, we are not able to have mutual happiness. And that's how the families get divided. But if you look at it, we do not want the families to get divided. Rather, we want the whole society to be undivided. We want to have order in the whole world. So we have to set up our goal correctly. We have to set the goal rightly in education. So what do we expect from education? Think over it. Try to explore and verify. Does the education have to be focused only on physical facilities? Learning about physical facilities, learning more and more skills to produce, to manufacture physical facilities, or even try to find out the need for physical facility correctly. Okay, trying to find out sustainable methods of production of physical facility. See, one thing is very simple. Something which is not sustainable will not sustain. So we have to look for ways and means so that we are able to enrich the nature as well as fulfill our needs of physical facility. And if you are not doing that, then ultimately we are living with animal consciousness. So think over it, explore this point. I think you must have explored about this earlier also. This is just a recapitulation of what we had discussed earlier. Now, if you look at the role of education sanskar in enabling this transformation, so the basic desire is the continuity of happiness and prosperity. And it is fulfilled by ensuring all the three, right understanding in the self, right feeling in the relationship, and recognition of required physical facility and its fulfillment with the rest of nature. Then only we can say that this is the true self. So we had said that human being is coexistence of self and body. And this right understanding and right feeling has to be ensured in the self of the human being. The recognition of the need for physical facility has to be made in the self of the human being. So when we are living with human consciousness, then we can say that, yes, this is the true self. If one is only working for, if one is only working for physical facilities, trying to accumulate more and more, produce more and more, consume more and more, indulge more and more, then this is something like uh, living with animal consciousness. And let me say that by saying animal consciousness, we are no way demeaning the animals. If you feel that animals also require relationship, then we humans require much more than that, isn't it? For that, we can explore a bit within oneself and see, don't we require that? How much we work for our siblings, our children, our parents, okay, which is not to be seen in animals. So if animals also require relationship, then we require much more. And if we are not able to work for relationships, then ultimately we are not able to live like an animal also. And this kind of transformation is utmost requirement in education. If you are not able to fulfill this particular requirement, then our education is not going to serve the true need of the society. So think about this, explore this point. Are we able to see that education has to enable this transformation? You can take some time and think over it, verify it for yourself. And where we are today, are we trying to enable this transformation or we are just working for physical facilities? Explore this point. You can also like to write a brief note over this so that we are able to see what actually we are doing today. Going further, we'll see that this human consciousness provides the base for universal human order. Now, when we expand the right understanding in the self, then we are able to see that there are four levels at which we live, at the level of individual, then family, then society, and then nature or existence. So this right understanding essentially means that I'm able to understand the harmony at all these levels. So I'm able to understand everything that is there, right from individual to the entire existence. Now with this right understanding in the self, I'm able to ensure justice in relationship. And what does justice mean? Justice means that we are able to ensure mutual happiness in the relationship. 
I am also happy. The other is also happy. And for this, I have to identify, I have to recognize the right feelings in the relationship, which are naturally acceptable to us. The feeling of trust, the feeling of respect, affection, love, isn't it? With these feelings, we are able to ensure justice in our family. So we have to make sure that the family members are able to ensure justice with each other. And when we are having this competence to ensure justice in the family, then only we are able to participate in the world family. The more you understand the relationship, you are able to see your relationship with the entire humanity. You'll see that the same feelings apply to other people in the society also. Can we have trust for other people in the society? Can we have respect for other people in the society? The more I'm able to contemplate upon these values, I'm able to see my relationship with the whole world and the world becomes a family for us. So this competence to live with mutual happiness becomes the foundation of an undivided society. And if this kind of competence is ensured through education, then gradually we are going to develop a generation which is able to work for undivided society, society free of divisions. And if this continues as a tradition, then we'll have a tradition of undivided society. Similarly, with the right recognition of the need for physical facility and the right methods for production of physical facilities, we are able to ensure orderliness in our family. So our family becomes a unit of order for the society. And, and going further, we are able to participate in the world family order. So when we say order, it includes not only the human beings, but the rest of nature also, where we have soil, air, water, plants, animals, and we are able to ensure our fulfillment with each of these units. This way, we are able to fulfill the human goal. If you remember, we had talked about human goal when discussing the harmony in the society. And going this way, living in harmony in our family, we are able to fulfill the human goal. And that becomes the foundation for universal human order. And this is the coveted state. This is the meaning of human consciousness in completeness. And when I am having this competence within me as a self, then I am living as a true self. I'm not a deluded self. So the expected transformations are as follows. One is personal transformation. So something that we discussed and personal transformation would mean transformation in my consciousness. I'm able to transform from animal consciousness to human consciousness. While I was giving priority to physical facilities earlier, now I am able to see my role in the world family. I am able to ensure justice in the world family. I am able to ensure order in the world family. So this is my personal transformation. I am able to give the right priority to right understanding, relationship and physical facility. And here I am able to transform myself. And I do expect that after going through the previous course, transformation must have taken place in you. And this is something that we are going to extend further. We are talk, going to talk about this further. And the second kind of transformation that is expected is societal transformation, where we have transformation in the society. And transformation in the society would mean that we are able to fulfill the human goal. So if you remember, we had talked about four human goals. One is right understanding and right feeling in every individual. The second is prosperity in every family. Third is trust, that is fearlessness in the society. And the fourth is coexistence in the nature. Now, the more I'm able to work for personal transformation, it enables the societal transformation also. My participation to help each other transform personally becomes the process for societal transformation. So these are the two expected transformations through education. Now, uh, if you look at this particular personal transformation in detail, and we are going to have this diagram in front of you time and again, then uh, what does this essentially mean, this personal transformation? So as a self, I'm able to develop the activities within me. Now, if you look at the diagram on the bottom, this is the case of deluded self where the self is only active in the lower block, block B2, and only the activities like imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, and testing are activated. But when I'm able to explore within myself, I'm able to verify at the level of my 
natural acceptance and I'm able to validate in my living, then I'm able to activate other activities in the self also, the activities in block B1, which is basically the domain of right understanding. Going further, we'll see that gradually we are able to develop the activities of contemplation, understanding, determination, realization, and authentication. And this realization is the completeness of right understanding. So when you say that right understanding comes at the first priority, it essentially means that we are able to develop these activities in the self, the activities of the domain of right understanding. So within me, I have to ensure realization. Within me, I have to see that I have realized the whole existence as coexistence. This may take time for each one of us. It does take time. But we are able to see th that this is essentially the goal for me as a self. And the final state would be that we are able to ensure universal human order. On one end, when I'm able to develop the activities in me, when I'm able to participate in universal human order. So these are two ends. Within me, I'm able to work for realization. And in my living, I'm able to participate for universal human order. And this is the meaning of personal transformation, personal progress. If I'm not doing that, then I am living as a deluded self. If I'm not doing that, then I'm living as a deluded self, where the activities of block B1 are not activated, they are dormant. Now, I'll not go into these details of all the words here. As we go along, we will come across all these words time and again, and also be able to see what is going to be the content of these activities. Now, if you look at the societal transformation, the four human goals that I mentioned, so we need to have right understanding and right feeling in every individual so that every individual is able to live a happy life. We need to have prosperity in every family. We need to have fearlessness that is trust in society. And we need to have coexistence that is mutual fulfillment in the nature and existence. And when we are working for this kind of society, then we have to have families living with common goal. Now there's one possibility that all the families living in the society have a common goal, which is something written here. The other could be that they have conflicting goals and that becomes a warlike situation. Or they have goals which are unconnected and then becomes a crowd-like thing. But when we talk about society, it essentially means that we are having a common goal. We are able to work for a common goal. Now, if you look at the inhuman society, it can be called as a crowd or battlefield, then this is the present state. So presently, we are able to see that there are various assumptions in the individuals. Like one common assumption is money is everything. The struggle for survival, only the fittest can survive. And so many assumptions. The other person is your opponent and you have to uh, overcome the other to live. If you look at the present state of society, we are able to see that we have largely an inhuman society. People are living either as a crowd or they are in the battlefield. And there are various uh, mistakes in fulfilling each of these goals. So in place of having right understanding and right feeling, there are some common preconditionings, common assumptions. One common assumption is that money is everything assuming that money is the most important thing in life. And along with this comes various other assumptions like the struggle for survival, only the fittest can survive, every other your opponent and so many things. In place of having prosperity in family, we are trying to work for accumulation and that also by me, any means. And we are trying to accumulate more and more without ever being able to make out how much we require. In the society, in place of working for fearlessness, we are trying to dominate over each other. We are trying to exploit others. And there is an atmosphere of fear in the society. Similarly, in place of living in coexistence with the rest of nature, we are trying to master over the nature. We are trying to exploit the nature. Isn't it? I'm not going to detail upon this. We are largely aware of these realities. And you'll see that these mistakes are somewhat common in every individual, these kinds of assumptions that money is everything. Now, even if you work for accumulation by any means, not every family can accumulate. So only few families, few individuals are able to accumulate that much. 
but that leads to domination exploitation fear in society and of course when we have to struggle with each other then we try to master over the nature we try to exploit the nature now what are the outcomes of these kinds of mistakes so one is obsession for consumption so we have got obsessed with consumption how much to consume what to consume not able to make out okay so how much wealth we require how many facilities we require we are not able to make out similarly obsession for profit so in place of working for mutual fulfillment in our interactions we are trying to work for profit maximization and that also being not being able to and that also not being able to make out how much profit we require similarly we are working for obsession for sensual pleasure now these three kinds of obsessions can be seen in the society now the tendency to exploit each other or to dominate over others has led to wars has led to terrorism in the society isn't it and there are other problems in the society also which can be listed here similarly in an effort to master over the nature exploit the nature we can see that there are problems like resource depletion resource depletion means that the resources are getting scarce we have extracted so much from the earth that there is a scarcity of these resources in the earth and there are problems like pollution we can see how much this pollution is spreading and we can also see that the level of pollution that we have today it is quite injurious to health isn't it so this is something which is there today so when we are not able to have a common goal we have differing goals or opposing goals then this kind of scenario is going to emerge so this is the present state isn't it and of course you are not happy with the current state we want to transform we want to move out from here and for that we have to work for fulfillment of the human goal we have to work so that we are able to transform the consciousness at the level of individual we are able to transform the consciousness at the level of society and then only we can say that we are progressing we are developing in true sense of the word here you can explore and verify whether this kind of transformation is required or not what is being given here uh, as an appraisal of the current situation are you able to see this or not can we see that these kinds of problems are there the obsession is there terrorism is there war is there resources are getting depleted pollution is there and do we have a holistic solution to all these problems we have been trying to sort out these problems through various ways and means but they are only as patchwork okay but these patchwork solutions will not be able to give a sustainable solution when you go for a sustainable solution ultimately you have to work at the level of right understanding in the human being right feeling in the human being so you'll see that to fulfill the human goal we have to start from right understanding so you can see that if you have to work for the common human goal then you have to start from here this becomes the first priority when we are able to ensure this transformation in the individual then only we are able to have this kind of situation in the family unless we have the competence to recognize the need for physical facility rightly we can never be prosperous unless we are able to recognize our relationship with the rest of nature we can never be prosperous so to have prosperity in every family and not just accumulation or indulgence we need to ensure this right understanding right feeling in every individual and for that education has to play a significant role when we are able to ensure the prosperity in every family based on right understanding in every individual then only we are able to fulfill this need for fearlessness in the society unless we have the families which are able to fulfill their needs of physical facility we cannot have fearlessness in the society so we have to work for one and two so that we are able to ensure the three and when the human beings are able to live in harmony with each other then only we are able to coexist with the rest of nature isn't it otherwise the exploitation of nature will continue so this is the way we have to progress this is the way we have to move and for that education has to play a very significant role explore it verify it and try to find it out whether this comes very naturally to you or not here again i'll say that you can pause for some time have a look at these goals have a look at the priority and then try to sort out for yourself
now this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness will be seen like this so at the level of self we are able to have this kind of transformation where we are able to enable all the activity in the self we are able to develop all the activity in the self so that our imagination is guided by right understanding and this kind of transformation in the individual will help you transform the society so to fulfill these four goals we need to have this kind of transformation and we'll see that when we have the systems in the society which are able to fulfill these goals then generation by generation as a system we are able to develop the individuals with right understanding and right feeling so this is the process that gets rolling in the society but if that is not the case if we do not have individuals who have the right understanding and this is the scenario but if we do not have individuals living with right understanding and we have the deluded self here then we we'll see that uh, the lack of development of the self leads to disharmony in the society and we have these kinds of challenges in the society what we are facing today isn't it and when we have the society in this state and we are not able to have the dimensions of society which are in order the systems in society which can develop right understanding in the self then generation by generation we are get more and more involved in these problems we are getting more and more we are getting more and more embroiled by these problems then we are getting more and more troubled by these problems so where do you want to be in this state or in this state that is something that you have to make out now we are able to progress we are able to transform the individual and the society only by working through human education this human education enables the personal transformation so the purpose of this course is to enable this personal transformation in you and the more you are able to transform yourself you are able to participate in the societal transformation you are able to participate in developing other individuals in the society isn't it and that's how education is so important it is the education which is able to transform the self in the human being again i'll say that you can explore this you can verify this whether the education needs to enable this personal transformation or not presently if you see most of the time we are in gross with certain things in such a way that we even forget that i have to develop myself as a self i have to develop these activities in the self and we are largely working for physical facilities and thus the personal transformation does not take place you will see that today education is on the rise more and more people are getting educated but at the same time the problems in the society are also on the rise there is more stress in the individuals there are more divisions in the family there are more issues in the family the society is getting divided and the nature is getting exploited why is it happening and for that we have to take a serious note we have to see how the education can enable this transformation it is completely undesirable that with the rise in education the problems in society should rise not at all basically the education is meant to transform the society and not create problems in the society so this human education only can enable this personal transformation and with the personal transformation only we can have this societal transformation is it the methodology for ensuring this transformation is self exploration and we had drawn a diagram earlier to exhibit what self exploration means another formulation for the self exploration can be seen as follows another formulation for this self exploration can be done in this manner so we are already working at the level of thought in our imagination now the proposal that is put forward to you either through this course or any workshop is something that is coming from outside and now it is occupying your imagination so what is happening here when it comes into your imagination in your dimension of thought you refer to your natural acceptance now this is the dimension of realization here something that we called as block b1 and what we try to do we try to refer the proposals that have been put forward to us to our natural acceptance and essentially we are referring to the dimension of realization now when i try to ask something to my natural acceptance 
when i try to refer a proposal to my natural acceptance i get very genuine answers for example if i ask you what is naturally acceptable to you feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition and you get the answer feeling of relationship and you have got this answer from your natural acceptance so you refer to your natural acceptance here and then you got a very genuine answer and this comes to your dimension of thought that is your imagination and what you do next you try to validate in your experience whether it is my natural acceptance or just another thought so how to make it out so you try to live accordingly when you go to live accordingly you fulfill your relationship with the human being in your behavior and try to see whether this is leading to mutual happiness or not and similarly you work with the rest of nature and try to see whether this is leading to mutual prosperity or not so with human being we are able to ensure mutual fulfillment and with the rest of nature we are able to ensure mutual enrichment and this certifies that the proposal that has come to me is true and then it gradually becomes a part of my right understanding now you see that the responses that i get in my interactions goes to my thought and i am able to see that this is completely coherent with my natural acceptance so i can see the coherence of my thought with the natural acceptance with the dimension of realization and this is the way it works this is the way i am able to explore into a proposal i am able to verify and validate a proposal and then it becomes a part of my right understanding so if you remember the diagram that we showed in the previous slide we essentially need to activate this dimension of realization unless it is activated we are going to have conflicts in thought we are going to have turmoil in our thought isn't it but when we are able to activate this dimension of realization then we have happiness and that also in continuity and this is what we need to work for this is what this course is also aimed at so explore yourself whether you are into this process or not try to verify this you already had several proposals in the previous course which might have occupied your imagination and you are trying to evaluate those proposals and then at the same time you are trying to refer the proposals to your natural acceptance and you are trying to live accordingly isn't it so try to look into it try to find it out for yourself so now for self reflection i am going to share some homework for you in every lecture we are giving some homework to you and you have to submit that so uh, you have to see that the basic aspiration for a human being continuous happiness and prosperity now having assumed or understood this how have the priorities in your life changed so just try to make out what were your priorities earlier before going through uhb2 and what are the priorities now can you see some shift there can you see some transformation there try to make it out secondly you can uh, try to make it out the second question of the assignment is presently how much time and effort you are spending for right understanding relationship and physical facility try to make out separately so are we able to assign some time in a day working for understanding are we able to uh, identify some time in a day where we have to see whether the relationships are mutually fulfilling or not are we giving time for relationship are we able to share the right feelings with our family members with our friends try to make it out and how much time you are spending for physical facility here also you can observe what was your state earlier and what is your state now how much time you are giving for right understanding earlier how much time you are able to give now similarly for relationship what was your effort earlier and what is your effort now for physical facility what was your effort earlier and what is your effort now so you can make it out thirdly what is at the center of your life now body or self so it might be the case that earlier you were totally focused on working for your body trying to work for physical facilities which can only be sufficient for the body but certainly not the self but some shift must have taken place in you after going through the previous course so are you able to put the self at the center now are you able to see that since the basic aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity prosperity is the feeling so ultimately this is going to be ensured in the self so the self is it there at the center of your imagination or you are still putting the body at the center of your imagination so think about this give sufficient time to think about these issues and try to jot it down try to write it down as your assignment now some questions might have come to you so you can share it with us 
So to sum up the lecture today, we recapitulated the content that we had discussed in the previous course. So we saw that human consciousness essentially means to ensure the right understanding, relationship and physical facility with the correct priority. If one is only uh, putting physical facility as a priority, ignoring right understanding and relationship, then one is living with animal consciousness because physical facilities can be largely adequate for only an animal, but certainly not a human being. And this transformation is required from animal consciousness to human consciousness. We also looked in detail what human consciousness means. And we saw that two kinds of transformations are required. One is the personal transformation and the second is societal transformation. For personal transformation, we have to activate the activities of the dimension of realization in the self. And for societal transformation, we have to work to fulfill the human goal. We could also see that this education process has to enable the personal transformation. And with the personal transformation can only come the societal transformation. So in this manner, we have recapitulated the content that we have shared in the previous course. And we also took an assignment at the end of the lecture. So do that assignment. We'll meet again in the next lecture. Thank you.